by Sri Lanka's best internet package for online learning and online working with many amazing offers. Call 1212 for more information. Sri Lanka Telecom. Lenka, tu kuma wedi karaga ne? Lao ju rupyal panata du kala. Mama, en api te ekak bom. Tonight, first step forward. 28 ministries and 40 state ministries to feature in the new government. The Gazette issued. End of an era. After almost 26 years at the helm, Ranil Vikram Singh had to relinquish UNP leadership. Don't relax. Epidemiology unit warns that Sri Lanka isn't safe from COVID-19 since neighbours aren't. Alleged demise. Is he dead? Is he alive? Angodaloka's DNA sent to India. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine, this Monday, the 10th of August, 2020. From Adha Derana, this is Adha Derana First at Nine. Nava Sunlight Sakura, then Dikukal Pavatina Sakura Mal Suandin. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine, I'm Dham Kekanayaka. In your top stories this evening, the Gazette notification which illustrates the structure, relevant institutions and rules and regulations pertaining to the cabinet ministries and state ministries of the new government was issued this evening. The cabinet has been restricted to 28, while there are 40 state ministries. The new cabinet of ministers and the new state ministers will be sworn in before President Gotabe Rajpaksha on Wednesday. The president's media division said that the swearing-in ceremony will take place at the historic King's Court of the Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic in Kandy. President Gotabe Rajpaksha, through an extraordinary Gazette notification, announced the ministerial structure consisting 28 ministries and 40 state ministries. This includes ministries that come under the purview of the president and the prime minister. The Gazette notification giving details of ministerial structure, relevant institutions and rules and regulations was issued this evening. The PMD statement said that national priorities, policy responsibilities and functions have been taken into consideration in formulating ministries. State ministries have been structured to facilitate the achievement of special priorities and the implementation of relevant programs according to the broad scope of each ministry. It also said that special attention was paid to the areas of national security, economic development, infrastructure facilities, education, health and sports in the process of formulation of the ministerial structure. The statement went on to say that the formulated structure covers a number of aspects of rural and agricultural development as well as the field of education. The scopes, priorities, affiliated institutions and legal frameworks of each ministry have been explained under several subheadings. Now, after almost 26 years at the helm, leader of the United National Party, Ranil Vikram Singh, has told his party members that he is stepping down from the party leadership. The UNP endured infighting and a party split in the run-up to the general election and suffered heavily as a result, failing to secure a single seat in parliament from public vote. The party, however, is entitled to one national seat, nationalist seat that is. Now the next UNP leadership is a four-horse race, as four UNP members have thrown their hats into the ring to, uh, to be in contention to take over the party leadership, with the final decision set to be announced on Wednesday. Former parliamentarians of the United National Party and office bearers of the party attended a meeting chaired by its leader, Ranil Vikramasinghe. During the meeting, the UNP leader had stated that he will be stepping down from the party leadership, adding that a new leader will be appointed on Wednesday. During the discussion, Vikramasinghe also told party members to come forward if they are ready to take over the party leadership. Afterwards, Party General Secretary Akila Viraj Karyavasam, Deputy Leader Ravi Karuna Nayaka, Vajira Abhe Vardhana and Daya Gamage had come forward for the party leadership. With that being the case, one member from the ones who came forward will be unanimously appointed by the party leader on Wednesday. Ranil Vikramasinghe had been UNP leader for nearly 26 years following the demise of late Gamini Desan Nayaka in 1994. After today's talks, some UNP members add views on media. 
නායක තුමා ප්‍රකාශ කරා එතුමා නායකත්වයෙන් ඉවත් වෙන්න කැමතියි කියලා. ඒක නායක එක්ක තෝරන එක තමයි දැන් අපිට තියෙන්නේ. ಪಕ್ಷය ඇතුලේ පුළුල් ලෙස සාකච්ඡා වෙනවා ඊළඟ නායකත්වය කොහොමද තෝරන්නේ කියලා. එතුමාට නායකත්වය ලැබෙයි කියලා බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන්නේ නැද්ද? මම එහෙම මේ බලහත්කාරයෙන් පිටිපස්සේ තනතුරු පිටිපස්සේ යන පුද්ගලෙක් නෙවෙයි. හැමෝගෙම කැමැත්ත ඇතුව තමයි එකමුතුව තමයි ඊළඟ නායකත්වය තෝරන්නත් අවශ්‍ය. එතකොට ජාතික ලැස්තුවෙන් කවද දැන් මේ පත්තර නායකයා හා ඒ අභිමතේ පරිදි ඊට පස්සේ කවද ජාතික ලැස්තුවට යන්නේ කියන එක අපි තීරණය කරනවා ඉදිරි වැඩ පටන් වලට ගැලපෙන කෙනෙක්. නායක තුමා ස්ථීරටම ඉල්ලා අවුරුදු බල කරලත් නෙමෙයි එතුමා විසින් කියන්නේ එතුමාට දැන් සමු ගන්න කාලේ හරි එතුමාට එතුමා තමයි පරිණතම නායකයා මේ මේ රටේ අවාසනාව එතුමා කියෝ ගත්තේ නැති එක ඒක රටවැසියාගේ අවාසනාව ඒක තේරෙයි තා ගොඩක් කල් යනකොට අපි කොහොමරි නායකෙක් පත් කරගන්නවා කවුරුත් බලාපොරොත්තු නොවන නායකෙක් ලීඩර් අයින් කරලා වෙන ලීඩර් එකේ දානවා එච්චර අපිට ඉඳලා ගියා මේ සජිත් ප්‍රේමදාස ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ කට්ටිය මේ කට්ටිය ඔක්කොම එක තුල තමයි එක්සල් ජාතික ජාතික පක්ෂ අදාළ රටට ඉස්සරට ගෙන්න ආන්න ඕන පක්ෂය ගොඩනග ගන්නට අවශ්‍යයි ආපු අපේ පාක්ෂිකයන්ගේ හිත දිනා ගන්නට අවශ්‍යයි विश्वास जनता विश्वास लक्ष्मी ंगदीरेंट गोटाश Prime Minister Raj Paksha took oath for the fourth time as Sri Lanka's premier yesterday at the sacred Kalaniya temple. After taking oath as the prime minister of the ninth parliament of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka yesterday, Prime Minister Mahinda Raj Paksha visited several places of worship and engaged in religious observances. As such, the PM called on the chief incumbent of the Sunitra Devi Pirivena in Papiliana, Most Venerable Professor Madhagoda Abete Satera. The Prime Minister then visited the Bellan Villa Temple and called on its chief incumbent, Venerable Bellan Villa Dhammaratana Thera. Ape rata maha vinasya kara gaman karmin tibila. एन बेरागत उद्गलया हटियत अपे गाउरुए हमदाम उद्वा लबागेर तीनो मेरा दे जनता आव तमं अतिं एक मेतिवार ने कर दी सिद्धेंचे आवाज नावंत वारद हरिगस्सला ए वारद इताम यहलिं ए वारद निवर्द करला उबत मात विशेष बालेक दील तीनो अपे रटा हदन अपे अपे पाउडगलिका ओने काम आवश्यकतावे निमि मैं बिना से करा गये गमन नवतला इधर ये टे मेरा टे गमन करवांट बुतुमाटे वड़ वड़ा शक्ति लेबे वा
Prime Minister Rajapaksha also called on the chief incumbent of the International Vipassana Meditation Center in Colombo 7, most venerable Udumbara Kashyapatheram. In a separate development, former presidential chief of staff Gamini Senarath has been reappointed as a secretary to the Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha by President Gotabaya Rajapaksha today. Senarath was initially appointed as a secretary to Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha following the presidential elections in November 2019. He joined the Sri Lanka Administrative Service in 1984 as a divisional secretary. We will see you shortly after this break. Stay tuned. Enjoy a very smooth shave with the Big Easy Two razor. Big Easy Two. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, issues continue to linger pertaining to the polls, with most of them relating to the national list. The Our Power of People Party is faced with conjecture pertaining to its national list seat in Parliament, with the initial national list nomination submitted to the Election Commission, later being invalidated by the party. A crisis situation arose pertaining to the national list seat received by the Our Power of People's Party from the general election. Following the letter submitted to the Election Commission by the General Secretary of the Party, Venerable Vedini Gama Vimalathi Sathera, stating that he has been chosen for the National List representation. However, the Chairman of the Party told the Election Commission that the letter is invalid, adding that it has been decided to name Venerable Galagoda Atte Nyana Sathera to the National List seat. However, Venerable Pahiyangal Ananda Sagar Sathera. who contested from the Our Power of People's Party stated that the representation of Nyana Sarathera from the national list should be informed to the election commission by the party general secretary however he has disappeared මෙතර ප්‍රශ්නේ තියෙන්නේ මැතිවරණ නීති අනුව පක්ෂ ලේකම්වරයා තමයි මේ මන්ත්‍රී ධුරේ නම් කර යවිය යුතු වන්නේ හැබැයි අපිට තියෙන ප්‍රශ්නේ මේ ලේකම්වරයා මේ වෙනකොට අතුරු දහම් වෙලා තියෙනවා අපිට දැනට සැකයි යම් විදියේ ජාතියන්තර මැදිහත්වීම් මතක් මත හෝ එහෙම නැත්නම් මේ තියෙන ආගමික අන්තවාදී මැදිහත්වීම් මත හෝ එහෙම නැත්නම් ආණ්ඩුව මැදිහත්වීම් මත හෝ විපක්ෂයේ මැදිහම් මැදිහත්වී මත හෝ මේ ස්වාමින් වහන්සේ සංගවා සිටනවාද කියන සාධාරණ සැකයක් අපිට තියෙනවා ඔබතුමා ලගේ සමාජ කුමාර ප්‍රකාශයක් කළා උන්වහන්සේ නැතුවට ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැහැ ජනතාව හමුදුවන්නේ ඉදිරිපත් කරන්න හැකියාව තියෙනවා කියලා ආ සංකීර්ණ නීතිමය කාරණාවකට යන්න වෙනවා පක්ෂ මධ්‍ය කාරක සභාව දැනුවත් කිරීම තීන්දුව දැනුවත් කිරීම ඊට පස්සේ අපි ඔවුන් එක අසංකලම ඇග්‍රිමන්ට් දීලා ඒක පොඩි කාලයක් යනවා ඊට වඩා ඉතාම ලේසිම කාරණාව තමයි ලේකම් හාමුදුරුවාවා ලියුම හැදුවා ඒ වගේ ඉඳුන්නා අපිට අවශ්‍ය කෙනෙක් පත් කරගත්තා In the meantime, Venerable Aludgama Indra Ratnathera lodged a complaint with the Election Commission, stating that Dr. Suren Raghavan, who entered to the SLPP national list from the SLPP, is also a Canadian citizen. Ceylon Bank, the bank with a heart. Now, the epidemiology unit cautions that any slip-up by the public in adhering to the health and safety protocols put in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19 will lead to a resurgence of the virus, which is currently under control. While appealing to the public not to be short-sighted, the epidemiology unit warned that the country is still not completely safe from the COVID-19 virus, and that largely hinges on the neighbouring country's ability to control their own domestic virus situations. The alarms come as schools resume today across the country with certain grades attending school under phased resumption plan. All government schools and government approved private schools reopen today under the health and safety guidelines that were issued by the health authorities. However, except for students of grade 5, 10, 11, 12 and 13 who will attend school on all 5 days of the week, all other grades will reopen under phases. Students at schools that have a total number below 200 can attend school on all 5 days while schools with students over 200 will resume for certain grades on certain days accordingly nurseries or primary schools and primary sections of all secondary schools with more than 200 students reopen for grade 1 today while grade 5 students will continue to attend school for the rest of the week students of grade 2 will resume school on tuesday grade 3 on wednesday grade 4 on thursday and friday Meanwhile, secondary schools with more than 200 students resume for grade 6 today, along with grades 10, 11, 12, and 13, who will be attending school the entire week. Students of grade 7 will attend school on Tuesday, grade 8 on Wednesday, while grade 9 will attend school on Thursday and Friday. For grades 6 to 9, school hours will be from 7:30 a.m. until 1:30 p.m., while school hours for grade 10 to 13. 
will be from 7:30 am to 3:30 pm මේ අවස්ථාවේදී අපිට රෝගීන් වාර්තා වෙන්නේ නැහැ සමාජයෙන්. එය පාලනය කිරීම පිළිබඳ යම්කිසි දක්ෂකයක්. නමුත් එයින් උපකල්පනය කරන්න බැහැ අපේ සමාජය තුළ මේ කොවිඩ් 19 රෝගීන් 100ට 100ක්ම නැහැ කියලා. අපි හඳුනා අනගත්තු රෝගියෙක් හෝ රෝගීන් පොකුරක් හෝ ඉන්න පුළුවන්. ඒ තත්ත්වය නැහැයි කියලා කියන්න නම් අපි වසංගත විද්‍යාත්මකව ඒ තහවුරු කළ යුතුයි. දිගින් දිගටම සමාජය තුළ පීසා පරීක්ෂණ කරලා ඒ වගේම මේ රට කොවිඩ් 19 වැළඳුණු රෝගීන්ට රටට ඇතුල් වීමට නොහැකිසේ අගුළු දාලා තමයි අපිට කියන්න පුළුවන් වෙන්නේ රට තුළ කොවිඩ් 19 රෝගී නැහැ කියලා විශේෂයෙන්ම අපේ කලාපයේ අපේ අසල්වැසි රටේ රෝගී හොඳින් පාලනය වෙන කල අපිට කියන්න බැහැ අපේ රට ආරක්ෂාකාරි අපේ රට කොවිඩ් 19 රෝගී නිදහස් කියලා. ඉතින් ඒ නිසා අපි දිගින් දිගටම සෞඛ්‍ය පුරුදු අනුගමනය කරන්න ඕන ක්‍රම ක්‍රමයෙන් සමාජය ක්‍රියාකාරි වෙනකොට අපි දකිනවා ඒ තිබිච්ච පුරුදු ඒ ක්‍රම ක්‍රමයෙන් ජනතාවගේ මතකෙන් ගිලිහිලා ගිහිල්ලා ආයෙත් සාමාන්‍ය විදියට පුරුදු විදියටම ජීවිතය ආරම්භ කිරීම मे इताम अदूर दर्शी तत्व नवत वताव कॉविड रोग घटतुट व्याप्त भीम अथवा पुलवांगलाश्य सौख्य पुदू आकारेम दिघटम पवत्तागिने अन्नकेला पासल पटंगण तेक पासल लमेन विशाल प्रमाण समाज एथुलवेन एवगे मऊंगे दिमापियान ओण किन वाहन वेदुरा मेता तुल नवतवता कॉविड नवे रोगे हटतु व्याप्त नोवि अभी मे लागत् पालने ऐहा सामन दिघट पातागिने अन्न मे पास शिष्यन गेन एवगे मऊंगे दिमापियान गेन सील दिन आगे मशाल दायकाश्यवेन In the meantime, among a total of 630 Sri Lankans that were brought back to the island today and yesterday, 28 returnees are from Qatar, 148 are from Japan, 168 from the Maldives, and 286 are from Australia. After being subjected to PCR tests, all the returnees were sent to the quarantine centre in Gaul. In other developments, the country's overall number of COVID-19 recoveries rose to 14 today, placing the total figure at 2,593. Meanwhile the country's total number of active COVID-19 cases rose to 263 after 23 inmates at the Senapura Rehabilitation Center tested positive for the virus today. Now in other stories police say that DNA samples of criminal gang member Angoda Lokka are sent to Indian authorities to ascertain whether the criminal is actually dead. They added that the police have taken measures to confiscate assets amounting to around 500 million rupees which belong to him and his criminal network. Indian media reported that Angoda Loka suffered a cardiac arrest recently in India and died at a hospital in Coimbatore. Reports also said that a Sri Lankan woman obtained the remains of the criminal following the postmortem under fake documents before cremating them. In the meantime there were various other developments with regards to authorities efforts to crack down on drugs drug racketeering and the underworld activities today as well. A special search operation was worked off in the area of Estate 75 in Totalanga in the Colombo North Police Division. It was conducted in line with the special operation launched in the Western Province to crack down on drugs and the underworld under the instructions of senior DIG of the Western Province Deshabandhu Tennakorn. Officers of seven police stations of Colombo North took part in the operation along with the Harbour Police. Police said that the raid yielded various suspects wanted by the police over certain crimes and some individuals who had warrants issued against them. They added that some of the arrested suspects had heroin in their possession. In the meantime a separate raid conducted in the area of Homagama has led to the arrest of a suspect with heroin from the Pragati Mavata. Homagama police have seized 35.64 grams of heroin from the possession of the suspect. Interrogations of the suspect meanwhile had uncovered information of another suspect dealing drugs with a three-wheeler. Later the three-wheeler in question was stopped along the Katuana road in Homagama and two suspects including the driver of the vehicle were arrested. The police found 37.14 grams of heroin in the possession of the suspect and a search of her house also yielded 43.43 grams of heroin. The police also found 170,600 rupees in cash at her residence. The suspects were produced before the Homagama Magistrates Court and they were ordered to be detained and questioned for 7 days. In a separate development, a 28-year-old woman was arrested along the Madam Pitya Road of Grand Pass while in possession of 25 grams of heroin by the Modra police. The suspect is identified as Shani Satapriya, alias Kutti, and the police also seized 242,290 rupees in cash and 275.55 grams of gold from her possession. 
Police, meanwhile, have apprehended that 331 suspects in various operations worked off within the last 24 hours. 122 of them are arrested in relation to heroin, while nine are nabbed over the narcotic commonly known as ICE. In another development, the Talangama police today uncovered information about a large-scale drug racket operated within the Talangama police area. A suspect had been arrested in this regard and interrogations have also uncovered that 186,900,000 rupees have been transacted from his bank account within a year. 25 grams of heroin and 500,000 rupees in cash have been found in the possession of the suspect and the Talangama police are conducting further investigations into the matter. In the meantime, the police say that her DNA samples have been sent to the Criminal Investigation Department of India via the Indian High Commission pertaining to the alleged death of organized criminal gang member Angodalokka's death. Indian media reported that the wanted criminal had died of cardiac arrest in Coimbatore and he was aided by a Sri Lankan woman to assume an alias while in India. we will see you shortly. Bear with us. Welcome back. This is First at Nine. Now, former Health Minister Dr. Rajita Sena Ratna and former chairman of the State Pharmaceutical Corporation were issued summons today to reappear before the Colombo High Court on the 28th of this month. The duo is summoned pertaining to the controversial white van media briefing the former parliamentarian held in the lead-up to last year's presidential election. The High Court Judge Gihan Kulatunga today issued summons for former MP Dr. Rajita Sena Ratna and former Chairman of the State Pharmaceutical Cooperation Rumi Mohammed to appear before the court on the 28th of this month. The summons were issued after considering the indictments filed by the Attorney General against the two suspects under Section 190 and 169G of the Penal Code and Section 80 of the Presidential Elections Act on 14 counts of conspiracy, aiding and abetting. Among the 14 counts is the holding of the White Van Media Briefing, fabrication of evidence and committing a corrupt act that could affect the outcome of the presidential election. These accusations were made after former MP Dr. Rajita Senaratna held a media briefing along with two other individuals during the run-up to the 2019 presidential election, alleging that the White Van abductions took place during the tenure of former President and current Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha. Former Chairman of the State Pharmaceutical Cooperation Rumi Mohammed was accused of providing financial aid to conduct the media briefing in question. The Kurunagala magistrate today reissued warrants for the arrest of Kurunagala Mayor Tushar Sanjeeva and four others in the case filed over the demolition of the Buenaka Hotel, a building of historical value in Kurunagala. The duo, or more like due to the failure of the Kurunagala police to execute the warrants previously issued for their arrest, the magistrate has reissued the warrants to the acting IGP, the DRG and the SP in charge of Kurunagala. The court also issued an order preventing the suspects from leaving the country. On the application of the Attorney General, the Kurunagala magistrate on Friday issued arrest warrants on the Mayor of Kurunagala, Tushara Sanjeeva, the Municipal Commission of Kurunagala, the Municipal Engineer, Foreman and the BACO Operator. The Attorney General had directed the acting RGP to obtain warrants from court and arrest the five individuals on charges under the Antiquities Ordinance and Public Property Act and also direct the acting RGP to produce them before court without delay. 
The building in question dates back to the 13th century and is presumed to be the assembly hall used by the contemporary rulers. On the 16th of July, the mayor of Kurunagala had demolished the said building for a road development project. He had stated that the Road Development Authority had given its approval for the demolition. Meanwhile, the Sri Lanka rupee closed firmer at 184 rupees and 70 to 77 cents to the US dollar today in the spot market, while bond yields eased. However, the rupee closed at 185 rupees and 22 to 27 cents against the greenback on Friday. Now, let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. And that's it from all of us here at First of Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.